Welcome back, hordlings, to more Divine Divinity. Note to self, don't dig in that grave. Bad shit can happen. Ooh, I like the seamless houses. Inside and outside seamlessness. Okay, it's red. I'm assuming that means it's stealing. For searching it. Of course, he's not looking. Now he's looking. But if one were to reduce the quantity of skull dust by a percentage of two, perhaps the stability could be increased by as much as threefold under the right conditions. Oh! A source hunter imagine that quite a bit mm, more petite than the last of your kind I encountered, aren't you? Yes, by nearly 20 centimeters of tibia and a half. The circumference of the bicep brachae, as my memory serves. But no matter, no matter. Even if you could spare its hardiest specimen, I'm sure the order sent the individual with the next highest probability of success. Hmm? Huh? No one bigger than Lug Lug, especially in the pants. Tell me about yourself, little man. Me? Why, I'm more than just a little surprised you haven't heard of me. Uh, well, perhaps I can jog your memory. It was I who cured the Duchess of Arata of her unslakable thirst, a simple pinch of a tropa belladonna into her morning tea. Mm -hmm. I who discovered that age in itself can be halted by a single application of the tincture of Kikuta Dogalasai to the tongue. Not to mention that it has been my, and only my tutelage, that has permitted my apprentice Evelyn to soar to the Olympian heights she has, by the grace of good guidance and good fortune, managed to reach. So your apprentice has enjoyed some success. Yes, yes, mm, if that's how we're referring to the secretive use of revolutionary healing method, hardly approaching the hinterlands of her understanding. She's in the other room as we speak. Perhaps you can prevail upon her to offer a demonstration. A revolutionary healing method? Can you elaborate? Some manner of quackery I can hardly stand to allow in my house of healing. She has procured a stone supposedly capable of pre-natural feats of healing. But I know neither the source of the stone's power, nor the nature of the gem itself. She claims to have gotten the relic from a little northern town, Silver Glen by the name, and that abbot there blessed it with the power to heal. Utter rubbish, I say, but these blasted on dead haunting the travel routes I can hardly march up to Silver Glen and learn the truth myself. Do you have any work for a trio of sailors? Sorry, but there isn't much work for sailors in the House of Medicine, unless one of them happens to have a secret stash of healing stones. <laughs> Do you know anything about Jake's murder? The counselor, a terrible loss at that. Oh, we are hardly more than acquaintances. I knew him to be a devoted civil servant. From what I can tell, it seems to be a simple case of jealousy turned violent. The affairs of his wife Esmeralda were hardly a secret, you know. Let us discuss your apprentice, Evelyn. She hot? I don't mean to imply the girl is wholly without talents, no. She certainly possesses a critical eye and an exacting manner when it comes to making difficult medical decisions. I do expect she'll be quite successful heal in her own right when the time comes. She is learning from the best, after all. Let me ask you about the affairs around Cycile. What can you tell me about this plague of undead? I've applied my ample experience to the particular problem for near two years, and have come nearly a step closer to its resolution in all that time. I'd go so far as to declare the problem unsolvable. Some events, Source Hunter, can neither be controlled nor understood by mere men. Holy shit! Guy's got some goodies. A 
A mysterious healing stone. Mm -hmm. Interesting indeed. Neither of you cares to plead for his very... Excuse me, this is Private Sigru. Who in the name of the Seven do you think you are barging in here? Out, I say, right this instant. No! Tell me about yourself. Oh, I'm sorry, it's this task. I just, I feel the very bean is unraveling at its most tenuous seams. I'm an apprentice of the healing arts. Healing! But this decision feels like precisely the opposite. I have but one healing stone, you see, and two direly wounded men who need it. I've been racking my brain trying to figure the best method to settle this grave situation, but perhaps it's better off in the hands of the esteemed soul hunter. Surely you are more accustomed to weighing life and death than I am. Tell me more about your patience. What would you like to know? I'd like to know about Boris. One of the brave few willing to traverse the trade routes plagued by the undead, a young man but excellent in matters of business, before he fell victim to an orcish club in the north, that is. Thankfully for him, a cattle trader found him nearly dead, but not quite so, and brought him here straight away. What about Stephen? He seems like a good guy. Quite the venerable staple of Sysil, Stephen, and recently blessed with his third grandchild, he was leading a crew of builders when a stray beam struck him in the temple, and only a few days shy of the last day of work before retirement, no less. Nearly everyone in Sysil is familiar with grinning Stephen, and as you can imagine, he's quite dear to his family. About your healing stone? Yes, a curious relic indeed. I got it from a kindly abbot, Loic, by the name, in the northern town of Silverglen. He is of a certain faith, the Immaculates they call themselves, that espouses the belief that certain stones can heal wounded flesh. I myself was nothing without a skeptical of his claims, but something happened as he handed me the stone. A small cut on my finger instantly healed, leaving no trace of the wound. Needless to say, I was astounded. But it's strange, the stone's only good for a single use at a time, before it reverts to its useless inert state. It takes time to regain its magical properties, and I guard it cautiously. Don't do the too long, these men are slipping ever closer toward the edge with each passing minute. Oh great, so I gotta decide their fate. Maybe I can heal one on my own? Thank goodness the source hunter is here. I'm in desperate need of something. So that's a good idea to save. life and death decisions. You are, I thank you a million times for your help. Who have you decided to receive the healing stone? Well, I'll give it to Steven. Let's see what happens when we argue. Boris has his entire life ahead of him. We're giving him 40, 50 more years while Stephen only has half as many left. Stephen's death will hurt far more lives than Boris's will. Let's minimize the heartbreak of this terrible situation and save Stephen. If you'd like to kill Stephen, perhaps I'll let his family have at you when they deliver the news. I'll even loan his wife my favorite studded club. If you tried to take Boris's life from him, I'll take an orcish club to you myself. Okay. Okay, I guess Ron Stalker. He's controlled by the computer. So we'll let fate decide. Oh! 
Ron Stock wins this argument. So, boys, it is. All right. Yes, I'll deliver the stone. I'm glad we can get to save one man, but my heart breaks for the other. At last, the billion words, what's this? What are you doing here? Where the very stars come to die? Who are you, and where have you come from? We are source hunters from the realm of rebellion. Are you indeed? And let me tell you, hunters of the source, that you have strayed far, far from home, far in space and far in time. How, I wonder? All we did was approach a strange stone. It shone with blinding light, and then whirled us away! A stone, you say? Could it be? Could I have been right all along? This stone? What was it? Was it bright, beautiful as a diamond? But did it glow softly deep down, in its heart, as if its soul dwelled within? I'd say that's a fairly accurate description! Starstone, it must be! For centuries it slept, this bounty of the heavens! But now it's waking, and it's brought its awakeners here! <laughs> all was dark and all was still, as it always has been, and always would be. Or so I thought, so I feared. But then the runes around me began to shimmer, shine and dance like fair-winged fairies, roused from slumber! Starstone! Could it be the key after all? It knew its will. Things of light to unlock things of darkness lead us into the realms forbidden, where salvation may yet be found. It would be great if you could start making sense right about now. Oh, I've been making sense all along, my friend, though. I didn't even see it. See! See! This is what you must do. Approach the looking lens and behold, if you dare, the darkness before which even the cosmic shadows flee in terror. No, I think that imp may be quite, quite mad. Then we had better appease him. Have a look through the looking lens. scare me! Oh, how brave you are! How bold and hardy! Too bad it won't help you, even a little bit, when the CBD inevitable end comes to swallow you whole. This maw of darkness, it consumes time itself. Yes, Star Soul Starter, you just witnessed the end of all. The maelstrom that, like Karen Eater, is devouring the carcass of creation. Space and time have lost all meaning, for they are falling prey to the void, and in the void, there is no existence. A bleak prospect, indeed. And yet, you do not seem to despair. I did despair for the longest times I did. Aeons upon aeons, I've traveled through the reaches of time, through the rifts that lead to worlds unimaginable, hoping to find something, anything, that could put a stop to the maelstrom. That is how I found this place, and I knew it was here that the answers must be hidden. It teems with mystery undiscovered, with power that 
is limitless, yet out of reach. Until you came along, the ones who contain the Star Stone. You have drowned my despair. You whom I believe can end the end of time. I think it's time to tell me who you are, Sir Imp. But of course, I am Zigzags, the Imp historian tasked by the gods to write the history of all creation. Faithfully, I have fulfilled my task and would have done so perpetually until one day I saw the time will end. Impossible, I thought. Inconceivable. For the gods had told me that their work was infinite both in days and in distance. But my eyes did not deceive me. When the maelstrom I beheld, time would end. I would end. I would end. No, I cried, never. I shall save time if it's the last thing I do. So far, my efforts have been in vain. But you, as the saying goes, are the hope that springs eternal. Starstones, the end of time. A source hunters. How about you connect the dots for me? Not like not too smart, you know. To claim I can piece the puzzle together at this stage would be premature and insincere. But let me summarize the facts as clearly as I can see them. Here we are in a fragmented sliver of space, which happens to be the only spot in all the universe where one may directly observe the void maelstrom. A portal flanks the looking net, but until now it was inert. The rune stones that adorn it are special, which lead me to believe they were somehow linked to the star stone. Star stone thou always remained as useless as a pepper, dead rock of no consequence. Its secrets remained off limits to me. You, however, make the souls inside the star stone spring to life, and therefore are activating portals to new, previously forbidden areas in this strange dimension. I do not know where they lead, but I am convinced that it will steer through a solution to the continuance of time. How did you get here? And uh, what is here? Ah, well, you see, on one of my travels, I found a root stone in the deep demonic dungeons that hide from daylight far beneath the surface of horror-haunted nemesis, a plane of frightful perversions. I read the rune and brought me here, the sad little realm that is no more than a morsel at the edge of the all-consuming abyss. Ever since, it has been a place where I found shelter, a home even, though it shares its dominion with the terror of terrors that is the void. So there you have it, the homestead of the shelter plane at the end of time. Welcome be, my friend. Welcome be. I'm gonna go now. Splendid idea. Later we can talk till the cows come home, but right now we should investigate the portal. Where or where does it lead, I wonder? So A strange new world is this? Let's explore! every imaginable tongue, from the dwarf wigan to the lizardies, but this woman simply won't budge. Maybe she doesn't like the look of a refined, impish face like mine. Perhaps you'll have better luck, but please do report back what you find, Source Hunter. I am the last chest. The last chest. The last chest. Do you believe yourself worthy of rightfully through my ample treasures? I do dare you to prove it. Find my four sisters, no more than one in each of the realms of your wide world, and each by each you discover how to open me. Huh? Meteor Strike Scroll? Skill level 19? Holy shit!
let's talk to the weaver of time. A young woman is ceaselessly weaving a seemingly boundless tapestry, with the delicate grace of a harpist plucking at her instrument strings. She takes no notice of anything but her endless occupation. Who are you, madam? At first it seems this taciturn woman will grow, continue to ignore your presence, but then she suddenly glances at you and her eyes go wide with surprise and wonder. Her lips move ever so slightly, and when she speaks, her voice appears to reach you from an untold distance. Whispers wrestle from oblivion. I am time, the weaver of time. In the ethereal threads of eternity, do I record the deeds of gods and men, of beast and spectral apparitions, the drift of the continents through changing seas, the rise and fall of empires, the shift of every grain of sand of every beach, the fall of every raindrop on every world, the all but imperceptible touch of lovers' hands, imper imperceptible I mean, sorry, this and all I chronicle without fault, except it seems you. Do you mean to tell me that I am not at all featured on the canvas of time? <laughs> I don't believe it. I do not mean to, but it is the only thing I can do. Your absence, it should be an impossibility. But no matter where I look, you cannot be found. I do not know you, which makes you my one perennial imperfection. A blind spot in the eye of time. But perchance I may be cured of this blindness. Perchance the blemish may be undone, and time can be redeemed. How can I redeem time if, as you say, I'm not a part of it? I think that perhaps you can redeem time because you create time. Indeed, you have set in motion an event I no longer held possible. Know then that no longer I did weave. I sat here at the precipice of ages and watched on as the void phrased the fabric of time like a terrified god that fears the offspring of his own creations. But suddenly there he was you, you who stirred the life within the stones, these stones, children of the stars. They placed new ribbons along my fingers like phantoms out of time. New threads emerged and I begin to weave anew. Starstone gives me a new strands to braid into tapestry. And because you give Starstone's energy, you are creating time. These Starstones, please, seek them, so that time may yet be mended. Please, for the sake of all the lives and all the loves, seek them, so that the void may yet devour itself alone. Ah, uh, I have many questions for you. Ask and I shall answer, if I can. Who are you, really? I am the Weaver of Time, as I have told you, though my existence is one that falls behind and yet far exceeds the verb to be. I am but what I am, and that is task. It is the same for the historian. Chroniclers both are we of epics of eternity. Perhaps we are one and the same, task multiplied by two. Who has made us? I do not know. Why have they done so? I do not know. Am I the beginning, and am I to be the end? Who shall say? Perhaps I am the first thing in creation. Perhaps I am creation. Perhaps I am the creator, or maybe it is you. You who makes dying stars rekindle. Time alone will tell. Why is the star zone so important? And why does it react to me and my colleague alone? Alas, the answers to those questions still elude me. You and the star stone remain the imperfections upon the tapestry as yet. A hidden answer lies behind this veil of inscrutability, though. For the link between you and the stones reveals that your destinies are intertwined. Star stones will not lead you to new places of wonder only. No. They will also lead you to new knowledge to the restoration of the threads of old. You call this place the precipice of ages? Is that what this is? No more? No less? Then it is itself a, is a lie. I, more than most realms can claim, but no. The precipice of ages is not the be-all and end-all of this curious plane. What is it? It's but a seed bereft of sun and water. What could it be? That is what the star stones can tell. What it is, is but the end. What it could be is the end of ends. I resided in another realm altogether, but ever since the end of time appeared in these deep dark skies, I materialized here as if forced to watch the one thing that is unwatchable, under unendurable. A thankless task that you may yet free me from forever. Why do you talk to me, but not the imp historian? I do not usually talk. Come to think of it, when I addressed you, it was the first time my voice was ever invoked. 
I have no need for conversation like I have no need for air or appetite or affection. All I need and all I am is time. And time is running out. Unless you remedy its declivity. You I talk to. For you may prove to become the cure that will heal my sleeping soul. The plot thickens. We should tell the imp the weaver's tale. So much to see, so much to discover, and so little time to do it in. I met with the weaver of time. She talked to me. Wondrous, oh wondrous indeed. At least she's willing to speak to someone around here. So, what did she say? That I should look for the star stones. For they renew and revitalize time. I knew it. As surely as Zix comes before Zax, I knew it. That should be your mission, my friend. Oh, I beseech you. Let that be your mission to trace Starstone, wherever it may lead you. Together, we'll try to unfold the depths of this dimension, and thereby probably try to save all and everything from annihilation. Here, take this room stone and this precious little pyramid. Gifts are they from me to you. The rune will bring you back and forth from Rebellion whenever you decide the moment is opportune. And the pyramid, it has a twin. Find it, and you'll see just how handy these twins can be. Star stones, end of time, a source hunters. Hmm, how'd you get here? Wait, I asked all this shit already. You've received a rune stone that allows you to quick travel. Use the Homestead Travel button on the right side of the screen under the mini-map. Alright, I'll check that out in a second. Hold your horses. Guns have been active portals, that's for sure. Was interesting. The chick in the bathtub, she'd love it if I burst in. Tell your indulgence if you please. You are the source hunter, are you not? The hero of the whole Sicilism buzz about. The talk of the town, the juiciest grape on the grapevine. 
Such a pleasure to meet you. A delight. No, scratch that. It's so much more than a delight. It's an intervention of fate. Yes, that's it. Fate has put me on this very spot, so I may tell you all about the most intriguing opportunity indeed. And you are? Mendy is at your service. Why is my profession? Well, I'll tell you what it used to be, and that is a man of medicine. But does a man of medicine do but men? What has first been broken? I saved lives, to be sure, but today I can change them. Eh. Now about that opportunity you mentioned. Oh, it's not merely an opportunity. It's a once-in-a-lifetime chance to become better. To become the full extent of the promise that is locked inside each and every one of us. So, first of all, let me ask you this question. Do you like adventure? Of course I do. How could someone in my profession not? Quite right. Adventure is what we live for. See here, you and I share the same passion. I never doubted it for a moment. The thrill of walking the unbeaten path, the rush of finding yourself in a goblin ambush, knowing you'll prevail nonetheless. Too bad your line of work comes with such measly recompense, am I right? The wage of a mere soldier. Now, between you and me, tell me truthfully, don't you sometimes wish you would earn more? Well, I can't say that I have it. Yes, some extra gold is always welcome. Indeed, indeed, gold is always welcome. And among the fabulous five, gold flows as freely as water does the sea. Even so, my friend, matters of pecuniary nature aside, what is life without variety, without spice? To be a source hunter must get frightfully dreary sometimes, am I right? All those orders investigate this, retrieve that, and at the end of the day, what do you have to show for it? Wouldn't you prefer to call your own shots? Be your own boss. It's better to lead than follow. That much is true. Better to be served than to serve. I can care. Well spoken, well said indeed. Life is too short to spend it doing someone else's bidding, am I right? Of course I am. And I could help you attain that dream. Enact the change you deserve. And that's exactly why I'm here. Why fate has put me right by the door to the King Crab so that I could meet you and tell you about the marvel that is the Fabulous Five. The invitation to join us is yours. Grab it. Tell me more about the Fab Five. Oh, the Fabulous Five. How I enjoy simply saying the words that describe the most illustrious and celebrated adventurers guild in Rebellion. Our mission to better the world. Our mantra to better ourselves as we do so. To realize our dreams and cleanse our souls. You'd like nothing more than to enlist, wouldn't you? Of course you do, and you can. Of course, if you still have questions, I shall answer them to the best of my abilities. But if not, how about we get started? So what is it about the members of the Fabulous Five that they actually do? What a gem of a question. Straight as an arrow, sharp as a switchblade. Most meritorious of you. Now then, to join the Fabulous Five is to join a fellowship. To join a fraternity, a sorority, a community. The title of knight is bestowed upon you upon the moment you sign our waiver. And so it all begins. Waiver is misspelled, by the way. I shall be one to give you your first contracts. And once the job is done, I shall see to it to get your fair share and your, your reward. Of course, should you spread the word, should you propagate the gospel of the Fabulous Five, and thereby draw new knights into our fellowship, you'll get to share the reward from their contracts too. Isn't that wonderful? By now the genial glow of the fellowship must have warmed your heart. It has, hasn't it? But did I say fellowship? I mean family. For like a family, we support one another, cheer one another, see each other through thick and thin, partake in glory and defeat, work hard, fulfill contracts, enlist new knights, and swiftly shall you rise through your ranks. You will better yourself, you will better rebellion. You will make the stars shine all the brighter, and you'll get fabulously wealthy in the process. What's not to like? They should have had a. They should have hired me to edit this text because they got typos everywhere. I'd like to enlist. Of course, of course, of course. All you need to do is sign this waiver. Now they so now they spelt waiver right. And just like that, snap your part of the family. All I need is your lovely little autograph. What do you say? Yeah, why not? 
Marvelous, magnificent. Oh, but what am I saying? Fabulous is the word. You may not realize it yet, but your fortunes, your very life is about to change for the better. So let us not dilly-dally. To business. Your first assignment is ready and waiting, if you're willing. Tell me about my assignment. It's pretty straightforward task, this one. Now in the town dwells a uh, wizard, Aru. In his name, and he's frightful eccentric. Scientific type, you know. Favors reason over faith and all that. Not fabulous five material him. His experimental weapons may keep a couple of skeletons away from the city, but many of the other researchers failed, malfunctioned with tragic consequences. One of them was a big lumbering apparatus, a frightful automaton shaped like a giant man of steel. It was supposed to crush the undead by the dozens, piloted as it was by a trained legionnaire. But you can guess what happened. Did it become sentient? Was it cursed? Whatever the cause, the thing relieved itself of its, relieved itself of its pilot and headed north towards a network of caves. Now ask yourself what if it comes back? It could smash the city walls and claim a hundred lives before being subdued. Luckily, there are those in this world who belong to the Fabulous Five. The Braves who eat such monstrosities for breakfast. Go, my friend. Find this wizard's abomination and claim your just reward from Mayor Cecil. In the name of our hallowed guild, easy money. I met some sailors looking for a job. Perhaps they could join the fellowship. You found recruits already? Efficient, proactive. Oh, I like that. Send them to me, and I'll sign them up. And of course, since they're your recruits, you'll get a share of every assignment they complete. Isn't that just fabulous? You're not worried about the undead out and about? They call the undead a problem, my friend, but those who know the ways of the Fabulous Five see no problems. They see opportunities. An enterprising spirit can wrench riches from cold, dead rocks. Or from cold, dead... full stop. Farewell. Devil back, I say, or I'll spit you from navel to beak. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. Medora, you jumpy lummox. Navel to beak, she says. A thousand pardons, comrade. When you've been bashing skulls as long as this old bear, it's easy to mistake every nudge and jostle for the deadly grasp of a sore cyclops. Cyclopus. Now, um, how about a proper introduction? But let's um, keep our voices down, shall we? One can never tell where the enemy had lain its eyes and ears. What do you mean by the enemy? Hell's spells, comrade. Keep your voice down. Do you want every Thaddeus rich in hell to know our private business? Any one of these shifty-eyed drunkards could well be a sore spy. Now then, I'll explain to you like you. I'm here to sniff out and annihilate the source threat. A source hunter in spirit and deed, if no longer by title. Medora's the name. My hand to your cause and my sword at your side. The order retired this little old lady to a sleepy town a bit north of here, but no rocking chair could keep a born and bred source hunter from such a flagrant infestation of dark magic. A counselor murdered? Medora, for one, won't rest until the fiend is caught. On that subject, I could use someone to cover my back, and with the source demons lurking under every loose floorboard in this city. And it goes without saying that you could use another stout heart, an experienced sword by your side. What evidence of the source and size seal have you found thus far? Evidence? Look around you, comrade. It fairly seeps from every crevice in town. There's Mayor Cecil, Therion, and the Feline Menace, to name a few of the many hundreds. Uh, Feline Menace? Yes, perhaps the gravest peril threatening size seal. Did you know those wee whiskered fiends can see clear as day in the blackest night? Dark dwelling schemas all. What about Mayor Cecil? A more obvious source wolf in sheep's clothes. I've never had the misfortune to meet. The black god's death is a brick, but it's nothing to do with his age, as he'd like all Sysiel to believe. No, I'm certain Cecil lost his hearing in a botched deal with the censure of the South. Many elderly folks fall victims to her wiles. She collects their faculties, eyesight, hearing, sense of smell, and memory, and in turn grants them some few more years to life. Why, my own mother woke blind as a mole one day and tried to blame the whole affairs on cataracts. She even got the local healer through bribery and coercion, no doubt, to vouch for her little tale. It broke my heart to arrest her for suspected sorcery, but no friend to the censure is any kin of mine. Tell me more about Belderon. The town healer and a warlock. I learned of his black craft the hard way, you see. 
as yet unfamiliar with his devious ways, I mistakenly made eye contact with the fiend over a selection of trout in the marketplace. He gave a little wink, innocent to the untrained eye, and his curse immediately came over me. My palms began to sweat like they had been held in hellfire, and my heart raced till I feared it might combust. A fog heavy with dusk, dark enchantments fell over my mind and my cheeks scorched. The villain had set the source delirium upon me. Fortunately, I was able to maintain the presence of mind to look away before his curse could consume me completely. I recovered quickly, but the next innocent he of snares may not be so fortunate. Join the party! You crazy and I like it! Well, you know the old expression, two is a tea party, three is an evasion. With our keen training combined, we'll be able to face any myriad of monstrosities that are bound to confront us. What do you say? Fantastic plan! Together we'll annihilate every speck of source from this captive city. Marvelous indeed. Another source hunter on the team will make us all more formidable against this wicked magic. Welcome aboard, Madora. That's the spirit. Listen closely now. Do you hear it? That's the sound of every source within a hundred mile radius, shaking in his wee boots. 